Hi, this is Matt from Low Spec Action Squad, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about computing history. This is a Pentium 3 processor based on the P6 microarchitecture. The P6 microarchitecture is among the very first to be considered truly modern in the fact that it introduced speculative execution, which unfortunately means that these are the very first CPUs ever to be vulnerable to Spectre and Meltdown. Now the P6 microarchitecture began with the Pentium Pro in 1995 and ended with the Pentium 3. The Pentium 3 introduced the SSE instruction set, making it a truly modern processor. Unfortunately, modern operating systems will not work on the Pentium 3 because most of them require SSE 2 at the bare minimum. Now what we have here is some Prestonia processors. These are based on the NetBurst architecture, and Prestonia is among the very first to ever implement hyperthreading as we know it today. The Foster MP, which is the predecessor to Prestonia, did have hyperthreading, but it wasn't introduced in its full capacity, nor was it very well implemented. In fact, it was even called Jackson hyperthreading back then. What we have here today is a full set of hardware of the era minus the hard drive, of course. Now the plan for this system is to experiment and see just how far you can get with Intel's very first hyper-threaded CPUs. I have a couple of coolers that are perfectly suited for these CPUs. I have currently installed two gigabytes of RAM, but this motherboard supports up to 16. Now, 32-bit windows can only recognize up to four, so we will only be populating four slots with one gigabyte sticks. To use my SATA hard drive, because I do not like using IDE hard drives for their slowness, I have here one of the very first SATA RAID cards. I also have a sound card, because this motherboard does not have onboard sound. Now this is the original RAID card that would have shipped with this Supermicro motherboard, we are not going to be using it, as it is tuned for SCSI Ultra 320 drives. Now this fits in Supermicro's proprietary expansion slot to give you PCI Express. Unfortunately, I do not think that it will work on this motherboard, so I'm not even going to try it. This predates PCI Express. So that's just a basic overview of the hardware that we are going to use. And of course, I could have used IDE, but as I said, they're a little too slow for my standards. So, with all that said, let's go over some of the features of the motherboard. You might be surprised. Let's go ahead and turn this here. On this motherboard, you get two gigabit Ethernet ports, a rarity from that time. You get an SVGA output using a RAGE chip, that has 8 megabytes of onboard VRAM. You do get USB ports. That also was a rarity for the time, and a first for the platform. Of course, you have your standard serial, PS2, and printer outputs as well. This is the Supermicro proprietary expansion slot, based on the PCI-X standard. This one here is for the RAID card, although you could install other things into it. This is for the SCSI Ultra 320 connections. Two IDE and one floppy. This is for a mini RAID card, although I do believe they had other expansion cards you could install there as well. And this was for additional SCSI drives. Now this motherboard that I have chosen is fully functional. I do need to replace the watch battery that goes in here for the BIOS, but I have plenty of those lying around, so that shouldn't be an issue. I will get back to you later, once I have an operating system installed, and we will see just how far you can get with Intel's very first hyper-threaded CPUs. This is Matt from Low Spec Action Squad. Thank you very much for watching this video. Signing out.